Um, a few changes were made from by, by the Springbok coaching staff, and I just want to get the opinion of the guys in terms of the performances. You know, uh, I'll be one of those guys, I'll be honest, South Africa and everybody else. When Mornerstein was included, I questioned it. I thought, you know, a guy played against the SAA, um, you know, hindsight, stroke of brilliance, yeah. Nick. You look at it now. Uh, Mostert at seven, Andre Pollard's performance, you know, Quibus Reinhardt. Those are the guys I want to discuss in terms yeah. of where are they. Um, Mornerstein, for instance. Yeah, quickly, <clears throat> on the changes they had to make to were forced off his Peter Steph to and that was a logical um, uh, replace like with like. Mostert is, uh, got a huge, he's got a huge engine, a really big good tackle count, carries the ball well, and we needed three line-out, big line-out options. Um, and then Rennick coming in uh, was a little bit of a surprise over Yankees, who was always on the bench, but they're looking at Yankees more as an impact player, Herschel Yankees, I think, rather than someone to start, and maybe looking at a bit more at Reinach's experience, Northern Hemisphere experience, I'm not sure. But uh, Monet Stan was, um, was a real rabbit out of the hat, in my, my, my opinion. Uh, I think they were thinking, what if yeah. we're into the last 15 minutes? What if something happens to Pollard? We need our best kicker. If it's a tight game, we need... And, you know, when you, when you prepare as meticulously as both Jacques and Rossi do... They would have had a drop goal plan going into those last 10 minutes. They would have the, the best goal kicker in South Africa that they could put on the field. And, um, you know, it all worked out fantastically in the end. And well done to the coaching staff and uh, great for, for Mornay staying to finish his career on such a good note. Should we be Franco Mostad at seven? Your yes, it's report right. back, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Performance, yeah. yeah you, you, we've always asked, you know, outside of Peter Steph to Toy, who's the next? sort of seven flanker that's put their hand up. I must say, that you can't put many names up in South African rugby. And Franco Mostert, if you're looking for like for like, high work rate, good line out jumper, physical, can tackle well, understands the system. But there's no one else that's really put their hand up. I mean, I don't think, we talk about New Zealand rugby, I don't think they've even replaced a Jerome Kaino up to this day. And he, and he left there quite a while ago. So your seven flanker has to be a showstopper, you know. Get momentum, stop momentum, good in the wide channels, good line out player. You know, and that, that's an area we haven't managed to get a replacement for that. And I thought Franco Mostert was the right guy to put in there. Yeah, I, I agree. Especially, you know, if you look at the subs, how they used it in the last two tests. It, the <coughs> timing was perfect. It's such an art and science and have the feeling. Yeah. Where they plan before and they'll say, listen, guys, you look at this. Uh, you can, if everything goes fine, give yourself, you know, prepare for that. But sitting there with them and listening and know how they think, that timing of theirs in the last two was absolutely mm -hmm. superb, I thought. And, and brilliant. Even the time when Mornay came on, I must say one thing, I think Pollard would have slotted that kick as well, because he showed it. Well, he, can, well, he can give the well, big kick. Well. What about the one against Wales in the World Cup? Yeah, but he's missed a few in this, yeah, this yeah, season, yeah, yeah. You know, whereby we need to build that scoreboard pressure. That's, that's no, I say it was the right me. call. I'm yeah. just backing Pollard as well. Yeah. How does that sound? <laughs> no, 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 you hear what you're saying. Those are the, I mean, I've got a list of players here, Swayze. And, 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 yeah. and, and Swayze, I bring this up, and not in, a, not in a bad way, so we... we We've won the series. We're celebrating. So we're looking at South Africans, where do we get better? And I look at Pollard where I think it's a test match. You're in Dunedin. You need to get those points. You, you can't slip up. And then the series is missed where, you know, you'll say penalty. And I'll, and I'll be sitting at home and I'm comfortable. We've got the three points. I turn around and oh, what's happened? You know what I mean? So for me, I'm quite concerned in that whereby we need, who's our next kicker now? If, if uh, you know, Mone is not there, uh, who's our next kicker in the squad? See, that, that, that's Yankees. a good question. It's Elton Yankees. Well, Elton, the is, no, but Elton, Elton's but on the bench. But if he's not in the squad, playing, yeah. Damien Willem say he's on a, his percentage is on He's a bomb now. squad guy. Absolutely. What happens then? So who else? It, it is a bit of a concern. I must just say, to come back to Polly, to, to uh, what is definitely important there uh, in New Zealand, it was a, a tough kick when we beat the All Blacks that he slotted under tough conditions. And I think often with these kind of uh, big temperament and match guys, they come through at the right stage. Mm. They might miss one earlier and slip a bit there, but they zoned in and they're professional enough to come with their vital ones. But it's, uh, and isn't there, the, with the selections, guys, there's always a risk. Even in the World Cup final, Franz Stein hadn't got a lot of game time mm. at 10. If Pollard had gone down the first two or three minutes, Franz Stein would have had to play... A World Cup. So there's always a risk when you look at selections. You can't have everything you want, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I thought we got the selection right in the second test with yeah. the bomb squad. The yeah. substitutions yeah. worked well with Le, Trevor Nyakani. I think that, that technically and tactically was the right thing to do then. But there's always a risk with something when you go 6-2 or you go 5-3. Robbie it's Thompson? Oh, sorry, sorry. Peter it's always a, a danger when you, when you become a spectator. But you think that I am the, the guy who can, can actually make a difference there, you know? 
and all of us are spectators at this stage. Uh, th those, people that, th those people have a, a, a group of 40 players in the camp, yeah. and there's Elden Yankees that we don't see. We don't know the kind of work that he's putting in mm. behind the scenes. Yeah. We don't know what's really happening in the camp. The only people who understand what next and where next and what buttons to press is the guys who's in control. Mm. Um, we will judge the outcome, and that will make it easy for us to give an opinion of, after that. Um, I have a newfound trust in the Springbok camp. Um, I would never be brought Mona in, to be fair and honest with you guys. Yeah. But for them to do that, look how it worked out. <coughs> um, I wouldn't have started Reina, but look how it worked out when we brought it up a Yankees. The, the speed was there, everything worked perfectly. So I think that we as spectators must now start backing the people in charge there and give them some credit <laughs> at some stages. If it doesn't go well, well, then we do have it. And at this stage, I feel, I just feel that, that it was a well-worked plan from the first day that we lost to the second and third day. It was a different kind of approach, a different kind of, of execution, and everybody was, was in song in doing what they, had, what they wanted to do.